Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today we are going to describe the development of the renal system. So before we talk about the development of the renal system, we need to talk about a little bit about the function of the renal system. One of the main functions which is to eliminate all the metabolic waste product by the filtration and excretion. And the other function, which is regulation of the electrolyte in the body. And the third function, the kidney serve as endocrine organ through the production of two main hormones. The first hormone, which is renin, which will play a role in the regulation of blood pressure, where the other one, which is the erythropoietin, which regulate the red blood formation by the bone marrow. Just to remind you about the microscopic anatomy of the renal system, if you remember, we talked about that the functional unit of the renal system is, is the urinephrostibule. This urinephrostibule is composed of the, the whole structure here to this level here, which is the nephron, and the other part is the collecting tubule. The embryonic origin of the nephron is different from the urinephrous tubules so that's why when you talk about the urinephrous tubule we say like it composed of two parts the nephron and the collecting tubules this area here which is the beginning and mark the beginning of the nephron which is the blind end tube like this this is the Bowman's capsule and we can see here there is an invagination of the blood capillary, which are the glomerulus. The next part after the Bowman capsule, we have the proximal convoluted tubules. Then we have the lobe of Henle. We have the descending part where we have thick portion. We have thin portion, thick portion because the wall contains simple cuboidal epithelium and thin portion because the wall contains symbol squamous epithelium and then we have the ascending again it contains thin portion and thick portion and the last part here which is the distal convoluted tubules At this area here we have the connecting tubule and finally we have the collecting tubules and these collecting tubules going to open the renal pelvis area from outside we have the capsule, inside we have the cortex, and this area here we have the medulla, and usually this area here has the pyramidal shape, we call it the medullary pyramids, and with the adjacent area, from here to here, from the cortex, both of these structures forms the renal loop. So the renal system is developed from the intermediate mesoderm. All the structure are developed from the mesoderm except the lining of the bladder and urethra, which are derived from the endoderm. So if you remember, we have the paraaxial, then we have the intermediate, and finally we have the lateral mesoderm. So most of the epithelium and most of the structures that develop inside the renal system, the origin is the intermediate mesoderm, as I said, except for the areas of the bladder and urethra. Usually the primordia of the kidney essentially consists of the tubular units. They are tubules, and these tubules are called the nephron. And usually the development of the kidney are in sequential arrangement. First part are developed in the neck region, we call it the pronephros, and the second part that develop in the area of the thoracolumbar region, which is the mesonephros, and the last portion that develop in the area of the sacral region, which is the metanephros. The only functional and definitive kidney will be the meter 
nephrok or met metanephrous kidney. Usually, this part here, the pronephrous and the mesonephrous, going to disappear and atrophy. The only remnant will be this duct here, which play a role in the formation of the male reproductive system, and we'll talk about it in the next lecture about the male system. As I said, these are in sequential, and the only one functionally competent will be the metanephros, which develop in the sacral region. So we'll start with the first one, which is the pronephros. Usually the cells of the intermediate mesoderm, see this area here, going to split into two layers. The one that near the coelomic cavity is called, or the peritoneal cavity, or the gut. This one here is called the visceral layer, whereas the one that found outside and close to the lateral wall is called the parietal layer. If you can see here, this area here, this is the parietal, this is the visceral, and this space between them is called the nephrocele, and this opening which lead from the coelom into this area inside is called the nephrostome. As you can see here, in the lateral portion, there is a formation of cord of cells from the intermediate. And this cord going to grow laterally and also going to grow caudally. This tube here is called the prenephric tubules. The prenephric tubules and the duct that form at this level here is called the prenephric duct. So we have pronephric tubules and also we have the prenephric duct. As I said at the beginning, they are cord of cells. They are cord of cells. Later, there will be canalization and this will result in the formation of this lumen. So again, we have the intermediate mesoderm split into two membranes or layer, we have the visceral layer, and we have the parietal layer. At the dorsolateral of the parietal layer, there will be a cord of cells. This cord grow laterally and grow caudally. This will result, or after the canalization and formation in the canal inside this cord, this will result in the formation of the pronephric tubules, also will result in the formation of the pre uh, pronephric duct and this will grow caudally to reach to the level of the cloaca you can see here here we have the aorta the aorta going to give branches one of these branches reach to the level to the solanic epithelium where the other branch we can see here reach to the tubules. This one here, which is the blood capillary with the pronephric tubules, is called the internal glomeruli, whereas the one that going to the level of the solamic epithelium is called the external glomeruli. This picture much clearer than the other one. We say here, this is the dorsal aorta send the branches to the coelom and this one here is called the external glomeruli where the other one here we can see this is a blood capillary and going to invade in this tubule here and this will result in formation of the Bowman's capsule which is the first part of the nephron. Now we are going to talk about the mesonephros almost at this level here, this here we have the pronephros that develop in the cervical region. They are going to atrophy and disappear. But before they disappear, they induced here. See, 
the intermediate mesoderm to form the mesonephrous tubules. And these mesonephrous tubules going to fuse with this duct, which is the remnant from the pronephrous. But at this time, we don't call it anymore as the pronephrous duct, we call it as the mesonephric duct. And usually, the mesonephrous going to develop in the area of the thoracolumbar region. If the pronephrous is only going to form seven tubules at the level between seven to fourteen, so might the mesonephrous going to form around 70 tubules and these tubules will be at the level of the thoracolumbar fascia between the somite 14 and 28. Before the development of these mesonephric tubules, the first thing happened that the intermediate going to proliferate at the level of the thoracolumbar region and going to bulge into the solamic cavity. And this will result in the formation of the urogenital ridge. This urogenital ridge is consists of two parts. The first part here, which is the urinal ridge, which is going to form the mesonephros, where the other portion here is gonadal ridge, which is going to develop into the male testes. In the male and in the female, it's going to develop into the ovaries. Again, the pro pronephros going to induce the intermediate to form these tubules. These tubules are called the mesonephric tubules, and usually they have the S shape. Later, they are going to be invaginated by the blood capillaries, and this will result in formation of the renal corpuscle. The renal corpuscle composed of the Bowman's capsule besides the glomerulus. We can see here this is the area. This is the area of the renal corpuscle. Again, it's composed of the Bowman's capsule and the glomerular tuft, which is the blood capillaries. And we can see here one end of the mesonephric will form the glomerulus, which is the beginning area of the nephron, where the other portions going to be connected with the mesonephric duct. And again, this mesonephric duct, as I said before, it's extend toward the area of the cloaca. Usually after the formation of these mesonephric tubules, there will be a regression and atrophy of the pronephric tubules also to the portion of the pronephric just cranial to the mesonephros. So again, this is the S-shaped tubule, and as we can see, one end invaginated by the blood capillary, where the other end going to join the mesonephric duct. Again, after that, the blood capillaries, here the art is going to form blood capillary beds around these structures, which is the area of the nephron. As we can see here, there is increase in the length of this nephron. And we can see the first part going to be convoluted and res will result in the formation of proximal convoluted tubules. And the distal portion will result in the formation of the distal convoluted tubules. Now we reach to the level of the metanephros, which is the definitive kidney, all the other kidneys, which is the pronephros and mesonephros, going to uh, disappear and atrophy. Only the part will be resist and form the definitive kidney will be the metanephros. At the level of the distal mesonephric duct, there is outgrowth from this area here. And this outgrowth will result in the formation of the uteric bud, which is, as, as I said, it's an outgrowth of the mesonephric duct. This uteric bud going to grow 
toward the intermediate mesoderm that found in the sacral region, and this will result in the induction of these metonephric mass to induce them to form the nephrons. Okay. So again, this is the area of the cervical region, ronephrus, mesonephrus, and metanephrus. As I said, this one's going to atrophy. This one here going to atrophy, but the mesonephrus will persist. As we can see here, and this will result will persist to help in the formation of the male reproductive system. Here, down there, there is outgrowth from the mesonephric duct to form the uteric bud. As I said, this uteric bud will grow toward the metanephrus plastema, and this will induce these cells, which is part from the intermesoderm, to form the nephrons. So usually in the unilobar kidneys, which is in this kidney, they have only one lobe, as we can see in rodent or rabbit. Usually what happens that we have the uteric bud going to grow and then well going to expand it inside the kidney. And from this renal bulbus, there will be extension which is, are the collecting tubules. And these collecting tubules will be surrounded by the mesodermal cells. And these mesodermal cells, which is the intermediate mesoderm, go on to differentiate into nephron. And there's multiple nephron that going to open into these collecting tubules. At the end, all of these plastema going to fuse together and this has, and this gives us the unilobar shape of the kidney. As I said here, this is the induction of the uteric tube. It's going to penetrate toward the mesodermal cells, and this will result in the formation of the nephron. And we can see here that there's junction between the nephron and the uteric bud. Both of these structures are called the unifrost tubules. As we can see here, there is an elongation and start to be convoluted, and this will result in the formation of the proximal convoluted and the distal convoluted, where it's connected with the collecting tubules. And we can see here we have the blood capillary, which is the glomerulus. Also, there's a formation of the blood capillaries around different structures or different parts of the nephron which is the proximal the lobe of Henle the descending and the ascending portion and you can see here there is the extension of the collecting tubule and this is true for the uni lobe because as I said at the end all of these plastema going to fuse together in the other animal species what we can see here, this is the ureter. It's going to divide into two major branches. And from these branches, there will be between 12 to 25 of smaller branches. And this branches will give us the collecting tubule. So it will be like this. This is the ureter. It's going to divide into two portion then it will give us a large like this this is the two major branches and this is the minor and from this one here we have another branch and this will be surrounded by the mesodermal cells and this structure will induce this mesoderm to form the nephrons so we can see like each one of these nephron first have two 
drain of this small structure then into the large structure then toward the ureter this structure will give us what we call it the multi lobar kidney so we start with the ureter then we have two major branches then we have minor branches and from this minor branches we have another branch and from this branch there is a collecting tubules as i said there is no true fusion between the blastema which is the mesodermal blastema or the metanephros blastema so this will give us the typical multilobar appearance so they say the hydric bud going to give two major branches and then another 12 to 25 minor branches. The dilated end of the minor become invaginated with the final uh, funnel shaped calyces and also will be capped with the metonephric tissue which is going to form the nephrons. So this is in the ox or in cattle so they have the ureter it's going to give us the two branches then the minor branches and you can see here all of it it's capped by the metonephrous blastema which are going to develop the nephron and we can see each one of them going to open separately into the ureter and this will give us the typical shape which of the multi lobar and we can see in these animal there is no renal pelvis similar thing we can see in the carnivores in the sheep and goat however in the equine it's almost multi lobar but the appearance will be look like the domestic carnivores so this is the equine again two branches and from there we start to have these loops so this is multilobar kidney the final thing i want to talk about is the development of the bladder as we know the bladder is developed from the caudal portion of the hindgut and as you know that this area here which is the urogenital sinus and this is the hindgut the caudal portion both of them they have common area here which is the cloaca and due to growth of the mesoderm from this area this will result in the formation of a structure we call it the urorectal septum at the end this urorectal septum divide dorsally the anorectal canal from the urogenital or urogenital sinus as we can see here there is a membrane here for both of them this is called the cloacal membrane but after the formation of this septum this will call this part here this part is called the anal membrane where the other part will be called the urogenital membrane and this area here it's where we have will have the future bladder so at the point of entry of the mesonephric duct in the urogenital sinus will divide this area here of the urogenital into the cranial portion which is toward the head which is the cranial vesicoelethral canal and this will give us the bladder whereas the caudal portion this one here will form the caudal urogenital sinus proper and this caudal urogenital sinus proper will give us in the male the penile urethra whereas in the female going to give us the urethra beside the part from the vagina which is the vestibule we can see here the area of the entrance of the mesonephric 
duct and you can see here the outer growth with the development there will be total separation between the mesonephric duct and the future ureter you can see like every one of them is open separately and we can see these two are converged they are coming together and there will be a formation of this structure here which is triangular in shape so here we can see how this is the ureter and it's open separately from the mesonephric duct and we can see they are coming and converge toward each other the same here see here they share the same entrance then it's totally divided and you can see this one extended cranially to converge this area here at this area here this arrangement will result in the formation of the structure which is the trigon of the urinary bladder this is this is found here at the area between the ureter opening and this opening here this triangular in shape this is the trigon this area the embryonic origin of this area is mesoderm whereas the rest of the epithelium that we can see around this area the embryonic origin is the endoderm this area is very important because this area is very sensitive to expansion when the bladder is full with urine this will send the signal to the brain and it's telling the brain that it need to be emptied so this signal usually increase and get stronger whenever the bladder continue to fill so this is the opening here of the ureter and this is the urethral orifice and this area here is the area of the trigon as i said the empiric origin is mesoderm whereas the other parts the empiric origin are endoderm